Thank you guys. Good to see you. This week I've been in, let's see, I was in LA. I, was, I spent the weekend in, in Malibu, California. Anybody been in Malibu before? And I had this vision of, I was watching Million Dollar Listing. Any of you guys watch Million Dollar Listing LA? Ever seen that before? I had Josh, Alt, I had Josh Altman on my radio show once. And what I was intrigued by Josh was that he was, literally grew up in New York City and he picked up and moved to LA and he didn't know one person. And now moving to LA is different than moving to Brentwood. You know what I'm saying? And not having, he didn't know one person. And he started on the mortgage side and he flipped houses and then he became one of the biggest real estate agents in LA. And I used to see them list houses up in Malibu. And they would go up in the mountains and you had the mountains and you had the ocean, right? And, uh, and so I told my wife, if I ever have to speak in L.A., we're going to stay in Malibu. So we stayed at this big, nice house up in the mountains. And the woman asked me this question. She's like, are you afraid of heights? And I'm like, you know, we got a cabin in Gatlinburg. We're good, right? <laughs> and she laughed, you know. And, and you literally just go up and up and up. And it's really a freaky way to get up there. But once you get up there, imagine these beautiful mountains and nothing but the ocean. I mean, it is literally beautiful. And I was in L.A. speaking for Churchill, and I did the L.A. branch in Phoenix, and then we come back and did Knoxville and Chattanooga yesterday. So I'm very excited to be here with you. Let me ask you this question. How many of you have ever had a good coach in your life? And what happened when you had that coach? How many of you had a bad coach? <laughs> right? How many of you spent money and had bad coaching? Be honest. Okay? And you didn't move the needle. Well, I, I got into the real estate game, and you're probably wondering, what does a former women's basketball coach have to teach you about selling real estate? What can I teach Michael Brown about being a great mortgage originator? Because I'm coaching $100 million mortgage people, but I don't sell mortgages. I'm coaching real estate agents doing 200 transactions a year, but I don't sell real estate. Now, why is that? I think there's a deep value in having an outsider look at your business that don't drink the Kool-Aid. I think there's a value in having a person look at your life. When I wrote this book, my agent did not want me to use a book publicist. She wanted me to use a music publicist. She said all the book publicists do the exact same thing. Most of the coaches tell you one thing, make more phone calls, call 100 people a week, do this, do this. Most of it never gets done. And so what I'm going to bring to you today is a very outside perspective because I buy and sell millions of dollars of real estate. I'm an investor in real estate, short term, long term, commercial. And I look at everything as a, as a person that is consuming what you put out, right? And I always just ask this question, if I'm not using you as my real estate agent, why not? What is, what is holding me back? What is keeping me from thinking about you? So I was a women's basketball coach for a decade and we, we were doing all kinds of real unique things. That's why you see this big gaudy ring on my right finger is it took me a decade to, to take a group of people to the highest level and become the best team in Tennessee. And what we were doing is we were teaching our players all of these things, like we were teaching every player the seven habits of highly effective people, the principles of good to great, the five dysfunctions of teams. Imagine your daughter playing for me and at 14 years old she's learning those things. What kind of advantage do you think she'd have later in life? Because she don't learn those things in school. You with me? And so what I was doing is taking and teaching these players all of these things that were giving them a competitive intelligence. And so we were going out there and winning and winning and winning and, and we kind of built our own little greatness factory and people began to ask me, what are you doing? Like, how are you doing it? Like, how are you getting these kids to play at very high levels like this? And I said, well, we're teaching them the body, the mind, the heart, the spirit, because what good is it to have knowledge with no desire? What good is it for a real estate agent to have all the knowledge in the world with no desire? What good is it to have desire with no skill? What good is it to have skill with no confidence? You see, most sales trainers come in and work on one part of your nature, the body. That's skill. Okay? And, 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 and the way I would show this to you is this. I want you to think of it like this. As a real estate agent, you and a person, by the way, I have a four-year-old daughter. She reminds me, Daddy, I'm a real person. You know that, right? Daddy, I'm a real person. I'm like, I know that, baby. <laughs> I know you're a real person. Body, mind, heart, and spirit. This is skill. So the sales trainers and coaches that only work on your skill are missing a big part of your nature, which is the heart and the spirit. So in essence, what good is it to have all the skill in the world with no drive? Everybody see that? What good is it to have all of the knowledge in the world, that's knowledge, with no confidence, that's spirit. 
Everybody see that? Do you think the agents who make the most money have the most confidence? Yes or no? Yes. Do you think they typically have the most skill? Not always. Not always. <laughs> Do you think they have the most drive, passion? Yes. yes. Now, so, so let me tell you this, and, and you could just look at this. So when, you're, when I'm diagnosing an agent that I'm coaching, here's what I'm looking for. Where do I coach you at? You got all the desire in the world, but you're deficient in your skill. What is skill? How you explain your services, how you open, how you close, how you prospect. Or you got all this in the world, but you got no drive. You won't prospect, you won't call back, you won't follow up, you won't do things you have to do to win. So I was using this model as a high school girls basketball coach, and I was growing the whole person. Now when you fully develop a whole person that is mature in all four parts of their nature, guess what happens? They produce at very high levels. They thrive. They don't only win, they win big. You with me? You could look right now and say, if I stop the coaching session right now, and I said, I'm out of here to the next stop, you could say, this is where I'm deficient right now. I don't have the skill I need to do the number of transactions I want to do. I don't have the desire or put the effort in that I need to do the number of transactions I need to do. I don't have the confidence, okay? And, and listen, when I, when I was working with kids, the number one thing that prohibited a kid from doing anything was confidence. Confidence is the memory of success. But what if you hadn't had any success lately? Okay? What if you don't have any success? See, you coming out of the gate strong is unbelievable, right? Your confidence will go up. But what happens if you go a month and you don't sell anything? This is what real estate agents' confidence look like. One, one, one week they're putting on a, a, a course in confidence, right? Because they're so confident. They like invented real estate, right? And then the next week they're like, hey man, I want to get out of this business. I hate this business. I mean, this is really what I see every week. So, so this is critical for you to know because the agents I coach, I would never be a coach that tells you just to make more phone calls or just do the one thing. What I'm going to do is coach the whole person. And so what happened is I began to win so many games, uh, people began to ask me, how are you winning? And it was all kinds of people, real estate people, big home builders, mortgage companies, banks. They said, will you come work with my team because we got a great team of people and they got a lot of potential, but they need a coach. They need a great coach, right? So I bring a whole person theory to the equation and that's what we're going to coach you on today. How do you, how do you play at a much higher level? And so about 31 years old, I retired from athletic coaching and I, began, and I started a coaching business. Now, guess who the first people were to hire me? So I retired from coaching. This is how naive I was at the peak of my coaching career. The first, I, I retired and started my business in the middle of the recession in 08, 09. That was a real smart move, okay? <laughs> That's, that was overconfidence, right? <laughs> or over stupidity. Or lack of knowledge. Or lack of knowledge. <laughs> but, but here's what I said. I won over here. I've done everything I can do as a coach. I can start a business and be successful, right? Nothing going to stop me. That's how I thought. So thank goodness during the recession, uh, Warren Buffett always said, where there's danger or fear, there's always opportunity. Bill, you hadn't heard me say that one. That's a good one, isn't it? Where there's danger, he goes with me everywhere. He don't hear me say everything. Here, I, tr trust me, where there's danger or fear, there's always opportunity. Well, guess, guess what? In 08, 09, when I started my coaching business, there was a lot of fear in real estate. I mean, paranoid fear. So the first people who began to hire me were the biggest home builders. I'm talking about individual home builders that were building seven and 800 homes a year, okay? And selling 40 a week. Can you imagine going from selling 40 a week to four a week? And making millions and millions and millions of dollars with your own private jets and multiple homes and everybody's having fun and then all of a sudden you're, think, you're looking at going bankrupt. That's the people I was coaching. And sometimes I had to go to their house and physically get them out of bed in the morning. That's how depressed they were. I'm talking about get up, get, let's get you to the office, we got to put a smile on and we got to get these people motivated. That's what they were paying me to do. So what do you learn when you coach the biggest home builders? Number one, you learn how people manufacture a house. You learn how people profit off a house. You learn how, where, where to buy the land. You learn how to build a subdivision. You learn a lot. Well, guess who else I was coaching? They're real estate agents. And their real estate agents at those times were very, very lazy. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to sit in model homes and have the company spend thousands of dollars of marketing and drive people in that door while they watch the fishing channel. 
And you know, I know they were watching the fishing channel because I audited before they hired me. I went in as a buyer and watched and walked through the process. One watched ESPN the whole time I was in the house, and the other one watched the fishing channel. Now, is that the kind of real estate agency who won't represent you on those houses? <laughs> but that's who were. And you know what the problem was? Just a few years earlier, those same agents made $300,000 a year. So imagine me walking in saying, what you're doing ain't going to work. And them fighting and resisting me. So once we got them profitable, all the companies I worked with did not lose money. They did not go bankrupt. They actually were profitable when they had budgeted to lose. But I learned a lot. And guess who came calling next? The biggest real estate companies. So then I began coaching all the real estate companies. Then I began coaching all the mortgage companies and the title companies. And now even HBM, if you're familiar with home buyers market, now I'm coaching them too. And so I have a unique perspective on, on this whole ball game from the way the house is built to the way it's sold, to the way it's mortgaged, to the way it's insured. And here's what I get to see. I get to see people that are at the very top of their game and what they do and how they do it. Does, it, does that make sense? And then I get to see people who are down here who are really struggling like little baby stars trying to get to the next level, okay? And so today I'm gonna unpack a couple, couple concepts on how I think you can elevate your business. But the first step is you gotta be interested in your own potential. I can't be more interested in your potential than you are. Does that make sense? And I see that a lot. I see a lot of brokers that are more interested in their agent's potentials than the actual agents are themselves. And I'm pushing you, and I'm begging you, and I'm pleading with you, and I'm saying, come get it. It's out there. It's for the taking. Reap the harvest, right? And, and you're just like, whatever. Trust me. Trust me, okay? There's gotta, you got to get serious about your own potential, okay? And when I say potential, I want you to think of it like this. I want you to think of potential... In a, in a conversation of where you currently are versus where you could be. Now, who, know, who knows what your real potential is here? See, my wife don't know my potential. My own mother don't know my potential. Nobody knows if I'm reaching my potential except who? I don't know what your agreement with the universe is. If you wanted to be a two deal a month agent and that's your biggest goals in life and that's all you ever want to do and that's your lifelong achievements to get to 24 deals, that may be your agreement with the planet. You may be like some agents I coach who want to make millions of dollars, right? And say, I want to do 100 deals, 200 deals, 300 deals. I don't know what your agreement is, but here's what I do know. How many times do we fall short of that every day? Right? At the end of the day, nobody knows this but us. And so what I believe happens is we reach a ceiling, and I want you to think of a ceiling like this. You're, you're basically in a state. You see these three states? This is what your real estate business is in. It is either dynamic and growing, which means it's alive, vibrant, uh, attractive, energetic. And how, do, how is your real estate business on fire if you're not on fire? Because you are the business, right? So if you're not in a dynamic state, here's what happens is that we grow our real estate business and then we reach a static state. Now, give me some other words for this state right here. Plateau. Plateaued is a big one. What does a plateau look like in your real estate career? Flat. Flat. Let me give some other words. Stuck. Ceiling. Apathetic. Bored. In a rut. Complacent. Anybody ever had those? Let me give you a great definition of complacent. It's a gradual settling to a place of mediocrity. Sounds sexy, doesn't it? When, I, when you send your kids off to school in the morning, do you say, hey, go out there today and just gradually settle to a place of mediocrity, right? <laughs> you know what you say? Go get it, man. Go get it. You know, I tell people, I sit down with my daughter every night, and we go over our goals for the next day. Every night, she's four years old. And I tell people, wouldn't it be great to be my daughter, right? And uh, <laughs> we don't read the Elmo. We read the Seven Habits, baby. And, uh, and, you know, but I sit down with her, and I say, get your notebook and get your plans for tomorrow, and I want to know what your goals are for tomorrow. And you know what's happened? Even on nights that I'm tired. Last night I came in from Knoxville. We left at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning yesterday, and I got home late, and I was tired, and I didn't want to write my goals down for today. Because there are days that I wake up, and I don't feel like doing it. And my 4-year-old daughter brought her notepad in about 10 o'clock, and she said, Daddy, get your notepad. We're writing our goals down for tomorrow. <laughs> right? I like that. Right? And you know what we did? We sat down and wrote them up for today. You know what we wrote down? Our targets. Who's on my hit list today? Who's in my farm club today? Okay, her goal's a little bit different than mine. Okay, but she does have sales goals. Don't think she don't have sales goals. 
But, 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 you know, we wrote them down. If I can teach a four-year-old to do that, and she does it consistently, and it becomes a habit and a pattern, right? Don't you think we should be able to teach adults to do it, right or wrong? And the real estate agents that map their days out and plan their days out are, are three and four times more productive than those that don't. It's just that simple. Because they're on offense versus defense. So what happens here, we've all been in this state. Is everybody, can everybody honestly admit you've been in this state before? Here's what it looks like. You hit the same number of deals month after month after month after month after month. You're making the same amount of money year after year after year after year after year. There's a small shift. There's a small shift in your business. What I mean by this, maybe it grows 5 or 10 percent, maybe 15 percent, but there's no hyper growth. There's no dynamic growth. I like hyper growth, rapid growth. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Like my goals are like, like 100 percent more year over year. Like I don't get out of bed for 10 percent. I wouldn't get out of bed to do one more deal. You understand what I'm saying? I want to know how we can make another million or two million dollars. I don't care about doing two deals. I mean, that's little. So, because it don't excite me. If your goals are not big enough that somebody's trying to keep you from having them or take them away from you, then they ain't big enough, right or wrong. <laughs> don't y'all believe that? If they, ain't big enough for, if they ain't big enough for somebody to try to take them away from you or keep you from having them, they're little bitty goals. That's just that simple, okay? So when you get in the state, what happens? If you got a good coach, here's the point I want to make to you. A good coach will never let you get in a static state. Right, Michael Brown? I will, not let Maddie, I will not let him get in a static state because a good coach is constantly going to push and challenge and make you think and they're going to go, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you could be doing this, right? Well, when we don't, we're left to our own devices, how many of you would agree that some of the worst decisions you've ever made in your life are when you're isolated from other people? <laughs> some of my worst decisions when I was isolated from other people, guys. You know why? No accountability. So agents that don't get in the office, you know what they are? They're isolated. You know where the energy is? Where's the energy at? Around other people. I could work at home. I own my own company. I could work at home every day in my pajamas if I wanted to. But I don't. I get up, I get dressed, I go to my office. You know why? That's where the energy is. Everybody follow me here. And when I get around other people, I multiply. So if you're going to be a great agent, what do all my top agents do? They're in their offices every day. They're prospecting two hours a day. They're mapping their days out every single day. They got a hit list of new money they're calling on every day. They're following up like a maniac every day. Does that make sense? Like I can't get them on the phone during their prospecting times. And I'm their coach. They're like, look, don't call me between 9 and 11. Because I'm on that phone banging out my hit list. Right? And here's their, here's their thought process. I get up and prospect in the mornings and I solve the world's problems in the afternoon. So what they do is they prospect in the morning and they solve problems in the afternoon. And that's how their days are set up, right? But if you don't ever go to the office and get around energy, you're isolated. And when you're isolated, if you're like me, and I'm, I'm, I'm being vulnerable to you, when I get isolated, I get static. Now, what comes after static? What does that mean? Disintegration. Dying. Right? So how do we keep you in a dynamic state? Notice, notice what this is right here. Right? So what a good coach should do for you is real simple. Have conversations with you you don't want to have make you do things you don't want to do, help you become something you didn't think you could become. And, and I love a verse in John, uh, John 4.34. You can help me out, Andy. Uh, he, he went to seminary school, right? And uh, it talks about the sower and the reaper enjoying the harvest together. And you know when I read that, I'm sitting there thinking, a, a good client relationship should be what? Both sides. It should be, you can't do this without me and I can't do it without you. And when the harvest comes in, we're going to reap it together. Everybody with me here? But real estate has become so transactional. Do you know that, that every real estate transaction you do should be worth 5.7 referrals? That's National Association of Realtors stat. 5.7 referrals. But most agents are not getting one or two referrals. 98% of agents never call a customer back once they put them in a home. That makes sense? 67% of people use the very first real estate agent that contacts them. Not the best one, not the best looking one, not the one that's been in business long enough. They use the first one. That is both good and bad for you, isn't it? That's why people use bozos sometimes for their real estate. Because they, they don't know any better, right? But what's the theory? The theory is the more sophisticated the buyer or the seller, guess what they don't do? Sophisticated typically is attached to money. The more sophisticated a person becomes, Right? The more worldly they become, the more money they have, they don't use the first person that contacts them anymore, do they? Mm -hmm. Who do they use then? They do research. That's right. The they use the best one. They don't use the first one, they use the best one. Okay? So today we're going to try to keep you out of a static state. How many of you, how many of you have said, hey, I've let myself get static from time to time? Yeah. 
So, hey, we left our own devices, we all contract and retreat. Left our own devices, we contract and retreat. That means we, we always go to a place that we're, where we are comfortable. Okay, so we need a person pushing us. Remember this, I'm trying to get you and the agents I coach to be people of power and influence. What I mean by that is I define power as a means or source for supply and energy. Everybody see that? And look at the connection between these three. Energy is what connects these three things. If there's no energy, you're static. If there's absolutely no energy, you're entropic. If there's lots of energy, you're dynamic. The best real estate agents are so dynamic, what's happening? People are moving toward them. Agents that are not dynamic, people are moving away from them. Everybody follow me here? And, and it's typically associated with one thing, energy. You're just not bringing enough energy. And so people don't want a part of that, okay? Now, when you think about this, I want you to think about selling as a game of probability, okay? Now, I spent nine years in college, and I know what you're thinking, man, he's real slow, right? Yeah. But I did pursue three degrees, and so I had over 400 hours of college credit, okay? And one class when I, when I was working on my doctorate, one class I had was a, was a class in probability, and I hated it. I absolutely hated the class on probability. But I did learn something. Can you learn something from even the worst of experiences in life, yes or no? Yes. I learned something. You know what I learned? That there is a probability of anything happening. Right now, a meteorite could hit this building. There is a probability it could. It may be slim, but it could happen. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Is there a probability you could not make any phone calls, sit around, have a bad attitude, be lazy, not have any energy, not call people back, not follow up on leads, and every now and then make a sale? Is there a probability? Yes. But it's a very what? Right? Just like on Dumb and Dumber when he asked Mary Swanson out. <laughs> and he said, he said, what's the probability? You're going to go on a date with me. What did she say? One in a million. One in a and he says, what? So you're telling me there's a chance, baby. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. Well, I look at some people's business and I'm like, there is a chance that you will sell something today, okay? Especially in a market like this, okay? There is a chance. But wouldn't we like to turn up that probability? Yeah. What if we could drastically turn it up? Do you think we could drastically turn it up? So when you understand money follows energy, attention, activity, and circulation. Do you, do everybody agree with that? The more energy I have, the more activity I have, the more money follows. Money follows that all the way to the bank. Okay? So, so when you understand this, I want you to get, I want you to just break selling down and just get basic, basic simple. Money changes hands when problems are solved. What problems do you solve as a real estate agent? Putting what, out fires. Okay, putting out fires, negotiating. negotiating. What, what if I told you there's a lot of problems you could solve in real estate? How many of you think you're in the, the, the business of regulating emotion? What if, you became, what if you became world class at regulating emotion? Could you sell more real estate? You see, my guy, my real estate agent really claims that that's one of his number one things that he does. And we took him from doing 30 deals a year to a, over 100 this year. He's going to make $400,000 this year. He made more in the first quarter than he made in the first 10 years of real estate. And when I found him, he was basically a goof off. He showed up at my house on the weekends with two cases of beer and four pizzas, and he ate all of it and drank all of it. <laughs> That's true. He wouldn't say, you said, hey, I like this guy, right? <laughs> I liked him too, but he wouldn't make it any money. <laughs> and then he got serious about his real estate career, and then, he, and then he became somebody. You see what I'm saying? And he says, the number one thing I do outside of just get attention is I am world class at regulating emotion because a real estate transaction is very emotional. It's dealing with your money and your memories. And when you deal with someone's money and their memories, it's going to get emotional. And when you get emotional, you know, remember I'm an old basketball coach. When I got emotional, my players didn't need me to be emotional. They needed me to be rational and stable. The more emotional I got, the worse it got. Does that make sense? And I see real estate agents, one thing didn't go their way today, and they, the whole day is screwed up and they become completely emotional, and they can't negotiate well on behalf of their clients, and they take it out on everybody else. See, one, one thing you got to become is I'm world class at regulating emotions. Does that make sense? What if I become the best negotiator in Brentwood or Nashville? Would that be valuable skill set, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
So I want you to understand this. Money changes hands from one pocket to another when a problem is solved. And here's the problem people have. They don't like their current house. They don't like the street they're on. They didn't build a house for a family. They got married. They got divorced. They had three kids. They want to move up. They want to move down. And when they do, they got a problem. Now, 67% of those people are going to use who? Very first person that contacts them. You follow me here? That's why you have to have such frequency in the market because they're going to use the first name that comes to their mind. Okay? So you got to own that little piece of real estate. So money changes hands when problems are solved. So selling begins by understanding really this relationship that a lot of real estate agents don't understand. And that is this. Most agents do not know what their unique skill set is. It's not just selling real estate. What could it be? Could be negotiating, could be regulating emotion, could be I'm better at building deeper networks than anybody else. Okay? Could be I can find things other people can't find. You have some unique skill set, and this is really what the people are paying for. Now let me ask you this question. Who will write you the largest check for it? See, we don't think like that, do we? We don't think, what do I have and who will pay me? We think, well, I'm just a realtor out selling some houses or representing some buyers or some sellers. You're thinking at a very small level if that's your thinking. Okay? The big time real estate agents say, I have a very special skill set that I've worked my whole life for. And there are people out there who will pay a lot of money for my skill set. Everybody with me? So I, let me ask you this question. Who, who, what's the largest commission check you've ever cashed? And where did it come from? And why haven't you gone back there and got some more of them? That'll make you think, won't it? See, you can wake up and fish for Blue Gill in Percy Priest Lake, or you can fish for Blue Marlin in the Gulf of Mexico. You're still fishing. Everybody follow me? You can wake up and solve small problems and make small money, or solve big problems and make big money. You're still solving the same problem. Everybody with me? So we go to Malibu to eat. My wife's got to eat at Malibu Farm Restaurant, you know, farm to table, all this set on the ocean. And I, and, and, and I ate fish tacos that were this big and they were $127. So I get my bill. We eat lunch. Lunch, by the way. This ain't like a nice romantic dinner. We're eating out there on the water for lunch. The very first meal we have in Malibu. And I get, it's real gourmet, farm to table, real nice. A fish taco about that, that big, right? And we get done, I'm like, let's go to Wendy's. I'm starving. <laughs> $127 for a fish taco that big? She's like, well, we are in Malibu, sweetheart. And don't you know Mel Gibson lives in Malibu? You know what I mean? Because that's where all the rich stars live. So are they, solve, are, they, are they selling fish tacos in Nashville? Of course they are. She was regulating your emotion. She was regulating my emotion. <laughs> hey, you're right. I'm like, don't coach me, okay? I coach her. <laughs> I'm like, I coach, I'm the one that coaches in this family, okay? <laughs> But my point is here that, listen, I was hungry. That was my problem. She wanted to eat there. That was a restaurant. We just paid a lot more money to solve the problem than we did in Nashville. Does that make sense? So, so, so I want you to think about this. I, most agents wake up and they just go out there and say, well, whoever comes along, come along and let's sell them something. We, they never target. They never think. They never go after certain people. They never, get, they never get in the circles they need to to sell bigger houses. They never do what they need to do. They just wake up and sell whatever they can sell. Everybody see that? Now, there's a, a, a portion of that I'm okay with. Get out there in the world and come in. But at some point, I want you to get more intentional. And I want you to say when you're sitting down with a person over the last 15 years, I've cultivated a very special skill set. And that skill set is going to help solve your problem. And you're not going to mind paying for me when I solve it. Everybody with me here? So what is this that you got? What is this that you got? Until you know that, what are you selling? You're just selling a commodity. And no matter how cool a house, how many of y'all sold some cool houses before? There's always one cooler. There's always one bigger and there's always one cooler. Those are commodities. We can get a house anywhere in the world. What we cannot get anywhere in the world is what? You. Your skill set. You have something very valuable that other people want and need. That is what you're selling. That is what you're selling. Everybody follow me? And until you figure that out, see when I was a high school basketball coach, the people willing to pay for me was a high school. I made 2,500 bucks a month. Uh, I don't know how much it comes out to. I got paid the same amount. And then I spoke at Dell Computers one day, and they paid me more in an hour than I did made in a month. They were willing to pay me 10 times in an hour what I made in a month. Right? That opened my eyes. I said, I'm solving the same problem. I'm still motivating. I'm still coaching people. They're just willing to pay a whole lot more money for it. You follow me here? That helped me say, hey, this is a skill set you've got, okay? Now, here's what I want you to know. Here are the four big missing structures most agents have. Here are the four big missing structures 
<laughs> I was just thinking about that comment. We're doing a documentary right now, so you can edit that part out about my wife, okay? No. <laughs> I forgot that I'm on camera everywhere I go. Because she will watch it. Here's the four big missing structures that most agents have. And I want you to tell, I want you, I'm going to stop right now and let you talk to the person beside you because when I coach people, whether it be an entire real estate team or individual agents, and, and most agents are in a program we have called Monster Producer, these are the four big problems that I see over and over and over and over. And, and I'm sure Kenny can say, oh yeah, I see this. They do not have a selling system. That means they do not have a consistent way to get customers and leads. Or they don't have enough strategies. So they're not driving enough what? Leads. Don't have enough leads, they can't hit their goals, can't hit their goals, can't make the money they want to make. Okay, they do not have a disciplined follow-up, which is a huge problem with most agents. That's why I wrote this book, Million Dollar Follow-Up. Because I, if I brought in a trash bag of how much money you're actually losing by not following up appropriately, it would get your attention, right or wrong. Right. Most stats say seven to 15 touches, 80% of the time to convert a prospect to a buyer. So if you're not going seven great touches, and they're not great touches, and they're not challenging that prospect, and they're not getting them to think and take action, you're losing a lot of money. And if I could quantify how much you're losing, it would get your attention. It would get your attention. Okay, and this is the biggest problem across all sales industries, okay? Third piece is they're not creating experience that should drive how many referrals per experience? 5.7. Now, if I told you you could get 5.7 deals out of every deal you do and you got 5.7 commissions, would you slow down long enough to make it a great experience, yes or no? Then why don't agents do that? And I'm talking more than give a closing gift at the gift and think that's going to do it and send them an automated drip campaign when this is over and think they're going to refer you. I'm talking about get in the boat with people and get them to a much better place in their life where they would fight for you in the market. That's what I'm talking about. Most agents are losing this. 98% of agents never call a customer back once they put them in a home. So it's very, very, very transactional. It's over, it's done, I'll move on to the next one. Now that's a bad business model. Everybody with me? And the fourth big uh, problem they've got is they've got no person of interest strategy. And I wrote a book called Person of Interest is, is what's happening is you're lost in a sea of thousands of agents and they don't know who you are. First rule of getting business is getting attention. Everybody with me? First rule of getting business is getting more attention. Part of the reason you're not getting enough leads because nobody knows who you are. You're the best kept secret in the world. And it don't matter how good you are, if you can't get attention for how good you are, who cares, right? So I want you to stop right now and tell the people around you which one of these problems do you think is your biggest problem? Personally, what, what do you think is your biggest problem personally out of one of these four, four things? Ready? Take off. Okay, now what a good coach should do, what a good coach should do is help you find and feel your missing structures. Do we all have missing structures, yes or no? I'm paying two guys out of New York City 7500 bucks a month to coach me. And I did an interview a few weeks ago on Good Day New York, I was in front of a million people on this interview, okay? And I got a coach there coaching me on what to say. Okay, I do this interview, I'm all jacked up, I'm all excited, my wife's there with me, and I walk out of the interview and my coach's sitting there like this right here. <laughs> I'm like, this is a big moment, man. I was just in front of a million freaking people. 
And you know what? I'm, so I'm like, give me some love. He's like, you didn't say what I told you to say. I said, give me a break, man. I was nervous. He's like, I told you to say two things, and you didn't do it. You didn't say the two things I told you to say. I said, but it was a great interview, man. Didn't you hear it? They said it was great. But he told me to say two things, and I didn't say it, right? So, so he said, look, when I get you on Fox, you better say it, right? He's sitting there telling me because I can't see the picture when I'm inside the frame. You understand? We're all biased. We get too emotional. You need somebody to look at you and your business and go, man, you could pick up three deals a month if you just did this right here. That's 36 more deals a year. If you just work, if you did nothing but, but, but work on... Now, I heard some of you say, I got no problem following up. <laughs> follow up, I, for some people, it ain't the problem that you, you, you do follow up, but how you follow up could be wrong. So here's how a lot of people follow up in the real estate world. Hey, I'm just following up. I just want to see if you had any questions. Worst question in the world to ask. Why? What can they say? No. no. I don't have any questions. Thanks for calling. <laughs> I had one real estate agent call, call, call me back on a $950,000 property and say this to me. He called me back four days later. That was the first problem. Four, after I looked at the property. And he said, Coach, I'm just doing my due diligence and following up with you. How do you think I felt when he said that to me? Oh, I hate to be a burden on you on almost a million dollar property here, you know what I'm saying? He never followed up with me again, didn't offer one solution, that was his follow up. I had people say, uh, I woke up thinking about you this morning. And that's creepy, don't ever tell somebody that. <laughs> right, or I, dr I was dreaming about you last night or whatever. This is how agents follow up, yes or no? Do you have any questions? Can I answer anything for you? Do you have any thoughts? These are, these are awful follow-up. If you're following up like that, never do it again. The way you should follow up is we use a concept called the challenger. And what we do is we challenge the prospect to think. So I may say to you, I brought you exactly what you wanted on a silver platter. What's stopping you from making a decision? Have you seen enough to take action? Every day we don't take action, we lose momentum. We're losing 10% or more momentum every day we don't act, right? Well, I, it's not 100% of what I wanted. You know what I say? Look, I live in a million dollar house and it ain't 100% of what I want either. It's 80% of what I want, but I'm happy every night I go home. It's a myth to think you're going to get 100% in life at the price point you want in the subdivision you want. Does that make sense? So a good agent is going to challenge the prospect. They're not going to let them off the hook. When they give you soft objection, a soft objection is what? What kind of objection do you hear? You seem like a bright guy. Okay, say again. I'm, not sure. I'm just not sure. What can I do to make you sure? Okay, there's a lot of things in life I'm not being completely certain on, but turn out to be good. Turn out to be some of the best decisions of my life, right? <laughs> I, I know what you guys think. <laughs> yeah, say, hey. Yeah, she wasn't sure about you, right? Is that what you're saying? It wasn't the other way around. Like, you weren't sure about her. She was sold. That's good. That's good. So, so I'm, not, I'm just not sure. What else do they use? Got to think about it, got to talk yeah. about it, got to talk to my wife, got to talk to my husband. Not got to, ready. Not ready yet. Got to meditate on it, got to medicate on it, <laughs> got to pray about it. I'm like, I'm Baptist, man. Let's pray right now. Let's just pray right now. I, I talked to God this morning. He said, you should buy this house. <laughs> now, here, here's, here's my point. I joke with people. I, I, I joke with people a lot, but I have fun with the sales process. I don't think it needs to be stressful. We, we stress selling out, right? I think people like to be sold to, that, that, that have fun in the process. So I joke with people and I say, man, I brought you exactly what you wanted. What's stopping you from taking action? You told me what you wanted and I got it for you. You know, so when we follow up, this little book will change how you follow up. And I wrote it because I was frustrated with how people follow up with me. The way people follow up with me is like this. Coach, I know you're a real busy person. That's the first mistake you make. The minute you say that, you are putting yourself in a, in a supplicated position. I'm no busier than you are. You understand what I'm saying? So don't call a person and say, I know you're real busy. Can I only get a few seconds of your time when it's convenient with you? Are you an expert or not? If you're an expert, act like an expert. And experts don't follow up like that. Right? I call a person and say, it's not a good time to talk. I say, well, it really wasn't a good time for me to call you either. But I did. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you told me to call you. Because you indicated interest in my product. Does that make sense? Now you got my personal cell phone. Use it. Does that make sense? So I, I push people. I don't do it in a negative way. I just I give them a little push. Now why did they come to me to begin with? 
If you come to me and say, look, I want to take my real estate business to the next level, do you want me to tell you what you want to hear or do you want me to tell you the truth? If I'm coaching somebody doing 10 times the amount of production you're doing and I'm looking at what you're doing and I'm looking at what they're doing and I told you what you could do, do you want me to tell you what you want to hear or, do you, or why did you come to me to begin with? Right now, there's, a, there's 258 million people on the internet in the, in the United States and 125 million of those are looking at real estate. When a person goes online and looks at real estate, are they interested in buying something, yes or no? Yes. When a person goes to a car dealership, within 72 hours they're going to buy a car. When a person raises their hand and indicates interest in your product or service, they are interested. You follow me? Now here's what's funny. The last house I sold, my personal house, I went online as if I were a buyer looking at my own house to see how they would follow up. So I look at my house on, on a listing that someone had bought, so they got the lead. The lead went to the agent and I got an email that was this big saying, hey, I noticed you looked at this property. Here's the question they asked me. Would you like to know more about the subdivision? What am I thinking? What do I want to know more about? The house. the house. I never got a phone call. I never got another email. I never got a follow-up. And that was on a $579,000 house in Murfreesboro. And there was only five of those that sold last year in Rutherford County. Five houses between five and $600,000. And that's how the agent followed up with me. Now, how would you feel if you were that broker and you bought that lead? How would I feel if I spent money to buy a lead, right? Sick? How, how, would, you, how would I feel if I spent money to go market or went all over the world and, we follow, and leads came in and build it and follow up with them? Right? Here's my point. Follow up is, is a lot of times just pure laziness. I got to call it what it is. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside force. You follow me? And you have got to be that outside force. The reason they're coming to you is because you position yourself as an expert. So when they do come to you, be an expert. And Steve Jobs said the customer never knows what they want until what? Until you tell them. I don't know what I want. That's why I've got my real estate agent. I think I like this house. I think I like this one. I think I like this one. I don't know. Will you tell me? What's the best subdivision? How can you negotiate this deal? How can you get more money for my property? How can I leverage this into this? I need you to coach me. Okay? That's what you're there for. So when you're thinking about this concept, I want you to think about what your missing structure is. And so what I do is I look at a complete pipeline. And this is how, this is how most agents operate, is leads come in through something. This is called our legacy selling system because most people don't have a selling system. Most agents cut this out right here. They don't even target people. They don't target people they like to work with. Everybody follow me? They just, they just start every week. Why do they got to make these boards so tall, man? Don't they know I'm a little man? <laughs> come on, man. So, so most people come into the week, okay, and what they do is they have these so-called prospects, but what they don't do is start off with suspects. So every week, I target 10 people I want to work with, 10 new people a week. And if I was a real estate agent, I'd do the exact same. I target people I would like to work with because I believe I could help them. Now, why do I call them suspects? Because I suspect it will be a good relationship. I don't know until we have a conversation. You, you, you with me here? So I target people. Why don't real estate agents do this? This is the audience participation part. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really asking a question here. Yeah, yeah. So, so I did a video this morning uh, to, on, on using two words you never need to use again. Too busy and overwhelmed. Eliminate those from your vocabulary. That's the first sign to me a person's not a big time person when they use those two words. Big time people do not say they're too busy. You know what they say? Increase capacity. Right? I'll increase my capacity, but I'm not too busy. It's two types of money problems. You don't have enough or you got so much you don't know what to do with it. Which one would you like to have? <laughs> two, types of, two types of real estate problems. You don't have any leads. You got too many. You don't even know what to do with all of them. Which, which overwhelm would you like to have today? So when I hear a person say overwhelmed, I'm like, you're doing two deals, man. You can't be overwhelmed. <laughs> I didn't step on anybody's toes in here, did I? <laughs> but I'm like, man, you ain't doing enough volume to be overwhelmed by anything, okay? Did getting out of bed overwhelm you this morning? Okay, so, so here's my point. Because I look at a person doing high volume, right? I look at a person doing high volume, and they never use the word I'm overwhelmed. 
Overwhelm is a state of mind. You may have a, se a, a, a second of overwhelm, you may have a moment of overwhelm, but what you don't want to have is a full day or a full week of being overwhelmed. Everybody with me here? So don't, don't say, well, I'm too busy to do, I'm too busy to do what? Call people back, service current customers, get new customers. So I target people. So if you notice that it's right here. So we teach, our, we teach our agents to have 10 people a week they're going after. That represents new money. Could new money be a strategic partnership? Yes or no? Yes. Could it be a past customer? Yes. Could it be a direct consumer? Absolutely. I'm just interested in new money. New money every week. I get 10 a week because I may not get them this week. Then once I, once I share my explanation of services with those people and I think they're interested, they are then a prospect. They are not a prospect until we have this conversation. Because what if I have a conversation with you and you are a psychopath and I don't want to work with you? I don't know that until I have the conversation with you, right or wrong? Would it be great to get your real estate career to the point that, that, that you didn't want to work with certain people and you didn't have to? Wouldn't it be great? To say for 20 years I worked with people that I didn't want to work with and I'm, I'm independent today so I don't have to, I mean financially independent so I don't have to work with those crazies anymore. 10% of the population is nuts anyway. Right? You're going to get some crazies. But what if you got to the point in your real estate career and you detected that early and you said, look, I ain't going down this road because I went down this road before. I only want to work with people who want to work with me. I'm only looking for people who are looking for me. Okay? Now, look at, so when in this cycle, here's your hit list. I'm pitching my services to new people. Here's your prospects that you're going seven touches with. How many people will commit to going seven good touches after today? I mean good touches. No more lousy callbacks. Follow me? Once you get people, how many people will commit to doing a better job with their current clients to deepen the relationship to where they're promoting you? Now, if you really do this right, you're going to end up with what's called advocates. You see these advocates over here? What if you had 25 people that sent you three referrals a year and they were great referrals? So we teach a concept called the top 25 where, where I get in the boat with you so much. So you start off, you didn't know me and I didn't know you, right? We liked each other because of our haircuts and it all started off positive and good, right? And you, you, get, you got a good smile. And, and so we started off, we started off over here and you were just a suspect to me because you've been in my trainings before, right? I've seen you before. And so you start off a suspect and I say, man, I like this guy. I like this guy. Seems enlightened, he shows up, seems coachable. I think, here, here's how my whole sales cycle starts. I think I can help him. Isn't that easy? See what your team, you know what I said? I think I can help them. I told Michael Brown, Michael Brown told me, you can help them, they can help you. That's how the whole sales cycle starts. You just identify people you can help. With what? Your unique ability to solve a problem they've got. Does that make sense? So if I, if, let's say you, you, know, you and I got this chemistry, business chemistry, I don't want to get weird, it's business chemistry, okay? But we start off with hit list, you're on my hit list, then you and I have a conversation, you go, man, I'm interested. I'm interested in you and you're interested in me, right? Let's say it takes you seven touches, let's just say, and you say, I'd like to become one of your clients, coach, okay? This is self-fulfilling prophecy. So then you, you say, I'm a client. Now, this is where most people stop, right? What if I get you to a much better place and I increase your deals by three a month, you pick up 36 more deals a year, and you run around Nashville and Brentwood and tell everybody that, you, that they had to hire Coach Burt. Would that be a good thing, yes or no? Are we, are, we, are we reaping the harvest together, yes or no? The sower and the reaper. Is that how it should be, yes or no? See that? So you're my advocate. Here's my strategy. I build 25 of these. 25 of these will send me three referrals a year. That's 75 new deals a year. Everybody follow me here. So in a sales cycle, it should look like this. This is what you should be doing every day. And you are never too busy to do any of these things. Every day you should be pitching your services to new people. How many people say I'm not doing that currently? I'm not pitching my services every day, right? All progress starts by telling the truth. <laughs> okay? I tell people, do, do you no good to lie to me about this? Okay? Because it ain't my business, it's yours. So if you're not pitching your services to new people, so what's the number one reason that you hear that people don't pitch your services to new people? Because they are what? Come on, tell me. What are they? Too busy <laughs> and lazy. <laughs> so I say, how many people have you pitched today your real estate services? How many, how, many, how many people have you talked to today about using you and you actually pitched them? These are suspects. A lot of people say, how many have you pitched this week? I'm pitching three to five a day every day. Every day. 
three to five a day, every day. I'm pitching 10, 15, 25 people a week. Where do I get these people? Yeah, everywhere. Seven billion people on the planet. Anybody I think I can help, right? I walked over here the other day and saw Churchill Insurance, right? You know what I, you know, I went straight to Mike Harbick and said, hey, would you like me to help you grow your insurance business? I'm helping you grow your mortgage business. See how easy that was? He's either going to tell me yes or no. I mean, I pick them up everywhere. I may walk upstairs and see an office or go downstairs. And, and everywhere I go, I'm like, I think I can help you. Let's explore that, right? I'd, li I'd love to represent you at some point. But here's what happens. You're going to tell me I'm not buying or selling any real estate right now. So I just give up. No, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about forever. I'm going to stay in your life forever. <coughs> You don't have to buy something today. I'm going to earn your business forever. So I'm just going to stay right there in the boat with you. Do you know how long I worked on Michael Brown to get his business? Michael Ham, how long did I work on Michael Brown? 18 months. 18 months. I didn't come at Michael Brown one time. I said, Michael Brown, I can help you. We met at the Panera Bread. He said I liked it. He didn't, he didn't go with me. He went with another coaching company. You know what? I kept banging on him. I just kept banging on him. Text message, hey Michael, thinking of you. Hey Michael, do this. Hey, dreamt about you last night, Michael. Just kidding. <laughs> Woke up thinking about you. No, I said, look man, I can help you. I'm doing this with this person, this with this, this, right? If I can do it for them, why can't I do it for you? I just kept banging on him. And then one day I get a call. Coach, I'm ready to work with you. You see how it worked? 18 months I worked on him. So what, what do most real estate agents not do? Consistent. They go one time and they give up. Just because I told you no today doesn't mean no forever. Why'd you give up on me? I'm actually testing you to see if you're going to come back. And you didn't come back. You didn't call. You didn't email. You just kind of left me out there in la-la land because I, you see what I'm saying? So every day you should be pitching your services, suspect and hit list. Every day you should be closing. How many touches are we going to go now and commit to? Because I'm going to be asking. Seven to 15. Seven to 15 minimum. We're going to follow up in a new way. Million dollar follow up, right? Then we should be onboarding. Now, this, now people ask me, what does this mean, onboarding? When you pick up a new customer, let's say you're representing me, and we went through this process. What a lot of people don't do is it's so fast and it's moving so quick, you and I never get to share really any great moments with each other. You don't slow down to speed up. What I want you to do is once you get me as a new customer, just slow down. Get to know me as a person. Have some meaningful moments along the way. What that's going to do is drive up your retention. When I spend 30 minutes with a new client of ours on the front end, either Skype or in person, do you know what that does for our retention rates? Just 30 minutes. That's what you need to be doing. Slow down. I know they're trying to speed you up, but you need to say, look, I need to, I need to, slow, I need to slow you down so I can really, really get to know you a little bit better. Because I don't want someone to represent you on one, I want to represent you on how many. I'm 40 and I bought four houses in my life. The average person buys four to six homes in their lifetime. I'm worth 5.7 or more referrals to you. Do you think it's worth you slowing down and spending 30 minutes with me? Yes or no? Yes. Every house I bought has been bigger. There's bigger commissions. If you just slow down with me and get to know me, my real estate agent takes me to breakfast every Saturday morning. He sends all kinds of people to my coaching programs. He calls me three days a week, four days a week. He was the best man in my wedding. Try to get that business away from him. Right? And don't think people don't try to get his business. They come at me every day to represent him, right? Look how he's embedded himself with me. But you know what the beauty of what he's done? He's done it with 25 other people too. He treats 25 other people like he treats me. Right? So he's, he's at breakfast and lunch with somebody every day. He's taking me to breakfast on Saturday morning. Every time I do an event, he doesn't do one Facebook Live where he doesn't promote me. I mean, he is pushing so much goodwill to me, that will make him a lot of money in his lifetime. But what if he's doing it with 25 other people? I do not agree that you can work 400 relationships at a time. I fundamentally disagree with coaching programs that teach you to work a base of 400 people. I do not think you can build a relationship with 400 people. I think you can build a great relationship with 25 people. And I think those 25 will give you three new referrals a year. Everybody follow me? That's 75 deals out of 25 people. So slow down <coughs> and onboard people right. That means start the relationship off right. Everybody with me? And then finally, every week, I, every day I spend time loving on some of my biggest customers. That's the top 25. And I try to build 25 great relationships, sending me three referrals a year. Now, 
If I could get you doing that, and I map my days out in a planner, so, so this planner, I built this planner for one reason. There was no planner tied to a selling system. So I built out the planner. Michael used the planner. Michael Ham uses the planner. Okay, so every night we sit down and we map out our next day. And all my coaching clients are mapping it out. A, this accountability tool, because when you got an accountability tool, I could show up at a meeting at your office and say, let me show you what I'm doing today. Everybody with me? Now, what's the power of writing it down for all you uh, tech freaks out there that think it's, 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 you know, 18th century to write something down? What does it do? It's a real. It's something physical. All right. It's it imprints it in the subconscious mind, guys. It's that simple. So every night we sit down and map out our days, and then we map out our targets. Hit list, farm club, top 25, our high value activity. And this, this puts you in an offensive mindset versus a defensive mobility. Everybody follow me here? So I could have a meeting with Bill at any time and say, Bill, show me who's on your hit list, who's in your farm club, how can I help you on any of these people? How can I help you close any of these people that you're working on? Because maybe he just wants to bounce an idea off of me. This is both an accountability tool and a planning tool. Everybody with me? But it's tied to a system. And the system is every day I'm doing these four things. Every day I'm doing these four things. I'm pitching. I'm closing, I'm onboarding, and I'm loving on my biggest customers. See that rhythm I'm in? So every day I'm working. Now you say, how do you get to all in the day? Hey, just a little bit. A little bit of new people, closing pipeline, onboarding new, loving on bigs. Could I get that all in in a day? Yes or no? Yeah. I could get that in in four hours, guys. I could get it in in four hours. I'm not telling you to call 100 people a day. I call three new people a day. I do three things a day to get new business. So I'm not asking you to do things that I wouldn't do myself, and I'm not asking you to do a bunch of things that you go, I would never do that. I would never call that many people. Now, let's say I'm new to the business. How much activity and volume do I need? I may need more than that. If you're not hitting your sales numbers, I may say, look, you need to increase your quantity. I'm listening to your phone calls and you're not very good on the phone, and the only way to get good on the phone is what? Get more phone calls, and let me listen to them. And I may tell you, don't ever say that again. What you said on that last call, don't ever say again. I heard you, and it is awful, okay? And I make bad phone calls. So don't, so, and I get better, right? And so for this, I'm trying to get you in a rhythm. Now you can you fish for bluegill or fish for blue marlin, okay? Now, I know we're closing up here, and I hope you get, get value out of this, because I want, I want you to really understand this. So when I go into a week, that's what my weeks look like. I got 10 people on my hit list. I got five people I'm trying to close. I try to get at least five new customers a week. I got three of my top 25, and I'm going to try to go out there and be a person of interest with video, social, database. If you follow me, if you're not following me, you need to because you need to look at all the content I push out. If I were you and I was a real estate agent, I would do the exact same thing. I'd write my own books. I'd have my own podcast. I'd do my database. I'd push out. I, I mean, I would push out because first step to getting a lot of business is becoming famous. Famous means well-known. We live in Nashville. Y'all know famous people, don't you? Okay? When I was at the LA airport, you know, they got a little app that tells you how close in proximity you are to a star. I was looking for Kim Kardashian, but she wasn't there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But here's my point. I could see how close, it would show you like, hey, so-and-so is in that terminal right now. This celebrity. You know what? People gravitate toward people that are famous. Let's just break that word down. It just means known. Do you think the most well-known real estate agents make the most money? Yes or no? You know what they are? They're famous. You have a famous name, by the way. You know how many times I've heard that I need to be working with your team over the last couple of years? I heard it over and over and over. I'm like, who are these freaks of nature I got to work with? Because it was always positive. This is one of the biggest real estate teams. This is one of the greatest brands. This is one of the, has the strongest legacy. I mean, I heard it over and over and over. So you are at a very strong brand. You get that, right? And how much does that work to you? When I work with State Farm, you know what I tell State Farm agents? You start off on the 50-yard line because of the brand. You start off on the 50-yard line. Can you get it across the, 50, the other 50 yards on your own? You see what I'm saying? If I'm working with some little insurance company in the middle of nowhere, you start out on the zero-yard line. Y'all are starting off on the 50-yard line with your brand. You understand what I'm saying? You're already known. So now all you got to do is get it across the finish line. Everybody follow me here? So what questions do you have about the system? 
any questions at all. No question is dumb. You ever heard the saying, there's no stupid questions, right? The only stupid people that ask questions. I'm just kidding about that. I'm just kidding about that. I don't mean that. We think things in the South, but we don't say it. You know what I'm saying? What's up? A million dollar follow-ups. If you've been following up with clients uh -huh. using bad conversations, yes. during the middle of that relationship with them, is it worth changing your strategy? Uh, or, yes. Or will they think you're just crazy because you well, I followed up with people. I, yeah, they may think you're schizophrenic, okay. but but that's okay. At least they're thinking. Yeah. And here here's part of my point. I just you, you, if your follow up strategy is not working, we try every. We're using video follow up. We're using every follow up you can imagine today. We, we you know Bill will be on the phone with a person and simultaneously text them a video. While they're on the phone, they'll go, Oh, I just got a video from you. Yeah. So we're using everything we can to practice what we preach of we're going to go the distance. But, but here's what I believe. If you are truly an expert, the reason I came to you is because I need you to counsel me on what I need to do. Okay? I don't need you to let me control this. I need you to control it. And sometimes you need to say, look, you've got to take action. If you've got to sleep on this another night, you're not going to sleep in this house. Okay? I'm just telling you the truth. You asked me to bring it to you and I brought it to you. I brought you the house you wanted at the price point you wanted and the subdivision you wanted. Okay, now I can't, I, I'm trying to pull this off for you, but I'm fighting for you, but I need you to get in the ballgame and fight with me. Does that make sense? So I, I just push people a little bit like that. The soft follow-ups just, I, I, if you travel with me for a day, watch how people follow up with me. It is awful. I mean, I laugh sometimes, and I'll call them I'm like, have you read my book, Million Dollar Follow-Up? <laughs> because you really need to read this book. Because it's just, it's so poorly, right? Here's what, here's, here's what I made up my mind. If I lose you, by following up with you like that, I didn't have you to begin with. You can't lose something you never had. And, and some people, you know, may, may say, man, he's just too aggressive with me or whatever. And you may say, look, here's what I would say. This is how aggressive you want an agent fighting for you when they're negotiating for you, right or wrong. You want me to be this aggressive for you. That's why you hired me. Yeah, you want me to get in there and be that bulldog for you. I'm only practicing what I'm going to practice for you when I'm your agent. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so, yes, I do think you should shift screen, okay? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you're saying basically uh, the hit list is to present yourself to 10 new people a day. A week. Uh, a week. A week. Well, I mean, how, how do you go about targeting? Okay, like, where, where do you start that? You just go right. to the grocery store? No, or? no, I do not, and that's a great question. Here's what I typically do. I typically work warm markets. Like, like, for example, I'm always looking for opportunity. And, and what I'm doing, like me going to Mike Hardwick, I already had a relationship with Mike. I'm already coaching his whole company. I said, here, I may say this to him, Mike, I know like gravitates toward like, and you're friends with other big mortgage company owners or founders. If, if you've been happy with my service, will you mind introducing me to two or three of those? Will you mind introducing me to Cherry Creek? Right? And he'll say, no, I don't mind at all. But I have to have that conversation with him. So he's on my hit list, and what I don't, I don't cold call on people a lot. What I do is work warm markets, right? I may go back to you and say, hey, if you really enjoyed this, there may be two or three other people you think I can help, right? It's not an invasive conversation. It's just, hey, if you like what I did for you, I ask my current clients. So my, my current clients could be my hit list to introduce me to new people. It's just really new money. I want you to think of it as I just want you every week kind of in this mindset that I'm kind of going after some new money, and the new money could be right here. Right? Like we have 115 people in my coaching program right now in Monster Producer. That's where all the big real estate agents are in. Would it be wise of me to, to have all 115 of those on my hit list to go back to them and say, if you've really enjoyed being in this program and we increased your numbers, can you bring another one to class next month? Does that make sense? So it's not cold calling. I just don't do that a lot. I'm not saying my company won't do it, but our, my sales force won't do it. But me personally, I don't do it. Michael Brown comes to me and says, hey, I got three people you can help that I was in a mastermind with in California. They go right on my hit list. I'll contact them. So, I don't, so that's kind of how I operate. But I don't do the, hey, at the grocery store, here's my business card. If you know anybody buying or selling a house, will you send them to me? It's typically warm markets. I'm just a little bit more intentional. I'm kind of mapping out who's on my list every week. That's all I'm doing. Do you want to say something to that? Well, I was going to say that one of the things that you coach so much is it, it's very important to have something valuable to say 
yep. as it is to have someone to say it to. Right. A lot of times what we do is, because I've been in real estate 25 years, a lot of times what we do is we get on there and we vomit all over people. Mm -hmm. And then they're so overwhelmed they can't make a decision. So our program, the EOS, you went into just a little bit, of, it's your explanation of services, that unique part, what makes you different? than everybody else, here's what I do, here's what I really do, here's how I, here's how I do it differently than everyone else, and here's who I've done it for. If I can help all these people, why in the world are we not working? Why am I not putting a sign in your yard right now? You know, But you do it in such a way with clarity and confidence that, that you can do it very quickly, and, and they understand. And they're like, my God, I've never heard a real estate agent say that before. Yeah, yeah I, I honestly would. And that's a huge part of this. So, so you're not calling 100 people. You're calling very strategically. You're calling people that, that you have valued relationships with or you want to. Guys, you're in real estate. Why in the world would you not identify the top people in your, in your area and say, I'm going to work with them? Yeah. I don't have a relationship with them, but you know what? Two degrees of separation, there's somebody that knows that person. Yeah. And I'm going to find someone. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm a good realtor. And I, I'm gonna, I want to work with the very best because they pay me the most money. Can you introduce me based on my knowledge? So we're asking for a referral, right? Based on our ability, our working together before, or the fact that you know me personally, would you give me an introduction to Bob? Could you give me in front of Coach Michael Burke? Because I know, I know he's a good guy and he buys a lot of real estate. You know me, I'm a good guy. I'm not going to embarrass you. Mm -hmm. Could you give me an, an opportunity to talk to him? And then when you call Coach Burke, you actually understand because our coaching program, your explanation of services, and you have something valuable to say because you won't waste this guy's time. That's right. Because he'll be like, boom, gotta go, man. It's all about this very quickly. Are you an asset or are you a liability as a realtor? Are you going to make me money, or are you going to cost me money? That's what you got to really, guys. All anybody cares about is, are you going to get them a good deal on the next property, and are you going to get them the most money for the property you're wanting to sell? Mm. That's what you guys do. You transfer wealth from one person to another. Yeah. When you see yourselves as that, your income generators, revenue income generators. When you see that, you'll see yourself completely different. When you have something valuable to say, and you can say it very quickly with clarity and confidence, yeah. boom, your business will take off. And we didn't get into EOS today because it's a big concept to unpack. How you explain your services is the first thing we teach people. And it's, it's, it's very critical because I believe your differential advantage could come in how you articulate what it is you do. Okay, so, so we've spent a year or two with Churchill working on theirs. What was so cool is when I was in California with them this week and uh, Phoenix is they all had their explanation of services. I could pull on any person in the company and go, tell me, Tell me what you believe and why you believe it. Tell me what it is you do and how you do it different than everybody else. Tell me who everybody you're doing it for and they can just roll it off. And so a lot of agents have never slowed down long enough to become world class at articulating their value. You follow me? And that's what Bill's saying. So we actually teach how to do that. And there's a six step framework in how you articulate that. What will happen is your confidence will go up and your close ratios will go up. So when you're on the phone, you're going to close a lot more people and compress the sales cycle. The sales cycle is going to be a lot tighter and faster, which means more money in your pocket quicker when you have something real valuable to say. Okay? Any other questions? Okay? Guys, has this been valuable to you? Okay, at least if not lie to me, my confidence is low today, okay? <laughs> I want to thank you for the opportunity. Michael, thank you for the relationship and bringing us here. Thank you guys for having me and opening your team up to me. I know that's a big deal. You don't just let any bozo in to do that, and I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Listen, there's going to be people here today that, that I know you're sitting in here going, I want to play at a much higher level than what I'm currently playing at, okay? And, and that's what you're thinking. The only thing you may be missing is a great coach. The only thing you may be missing. All the top agents have great coaches, okay? They just do. And the reason is people that have great coaches earn three and four times the amount of money than people that don't. It's just that simple. You look at you look across the board and they all have great coaches. So if you're here and you want to talk about a relationship with me through our big coaching program, Monster Producer, both of these guys are in it, Michael Brand and Michael Ham. They can they can talk to you about it. I tell people, you ain't got to talk to me. Talk to the people I'm coaching. Right? And anytime you make a buying decision, look at the demonstrated capacity of the people they've worked with. Ask them. Don't ask that person, right? But if you want to talk, Bill's here to talk to you about that. If you want to purchase any of the books, I'll be here for 15 minutes and then I got to move on to the next place because uh, it's a big world and we got a lot of problems to solve. You know what I'm saying? So I want to thank you for your time. And thank you for being coachable. Fair enough? Thank you for being coachable. First step always starts by saying, I would love to play at another level. And so hopefully this was valuable to you today, but it's just a, por a very small portion of what we, what we teach. This is some of the big things, but it's a very small portion, okay? So if you got questions for me, I'll be here. If not, yes, ma'am. 
coaching program works on sure. an individual or group level? Yeah. We got a program, and I'll show you a visual of this. Basically, um, I have a big, I created a big coaching program called Monster Producer. Okay, we have 115 people in that program. What separates this program from other coaching programs is that number one, I believe a monster producer is a legendary creature, okay, that combines multiple skills to dominate their market. So there's a certain, certain cut of person that says, I want to go play at a much higher level, but there may be missing the structure, the accountability, the process, the systems. So we've created a live, this is very critical, so don't miss this. I teach Monster Producer live every 30 days. And I teach it in Murfreesboro, Cool Springs, Nashville. And it is typically a group of 20 to 30 people, like-minded people, very heavy real estate, mortgage, insurance, anything that touches home ownership. Okay? They come together every 30 days for a two-hour session where I introduce two new business concepts on the growth of their business. So we cover explanation of services, selling system, follow-up, experience, right? How to market, how to become a person of interest, how to separate yourself. And then we offer weekly accountability sessions with the people in the course. That's a live session, typically with me, unless I'm somewhere in the world, and it, you go online, and we do it in a small pot of people where we're making sure you're getting that. So basically the way it works is you come every 30 days live, you would come here in Cool Springs or Nashville, or Murfreesboro if you want, you get two hour coaching session and what you'll get is energy, man. You're going to be around other people who think big like you do, who want to dominate. So it's a group of like-minded people. Then you have accountability once a week. Once you get through your first four weeks, you don't have to come every week to accountability. That's up to you. If you want to be on there every week, you can be on there every week. We then send you a replay of the session for you to watch it. Third week, we send you a shortened version for all my ADHD people in the world. I send you a 20 minute version of it where I break it down again. Then we do a mastermind session where it's me and typically a small group of people once a month where you can ask me one-to-one -one questions. Does that make sense? So our typical growth is about 43%. That's what most of my monsters are averaging in the first year with me. I have a number of people earning over a million dollars a year that I'm coaching, and I have a number of people earning 500000 to a million, and I have at least 10 earning 250000 and above in personal income. And one of my agents is the one I talked about earlier. He's going to make 400000 this year. He was doing 23 deals a year and just out in La La Land. And this year we got him on track to do over 100, probably about 110 deals. And so he's really, and he's been in Monster with me for a couple of years. At the end of one year, if it's going good, a lot of people renew. We have a 92% renewal rate from year one to year two. That means people that are completely satisfied and happy sign up for another year with me. And a lot of my big people have been with me three, four, five years. And so they're making a lot of money. We're having a lot of fun together. And that's, that's Monster Producer. So that's how you absorb that. If you miss a class, we record everything, so we send you the replays of that. Um, and we just get involved with you in such a way that, you know, if you're not successful, we're not successful. I can't build a brand in Middle Tennessee and my people that I'm coaching not be successful. You follow me? So I need you going out there going, man, this guy, best decision I ever made was to hire this guy. And we really took it to another level, okay? All right, anything else? Thank you for the opportunity, time, and energy, okay? We're going to go out there today and what? Follow up like champions, right? Right or wrong, my brother? Come on. Yep. Come with me. Let's do it together, man. All right, guys. Thank you very much. God bless you.